of the word impossible, Luke chapter 6. I think of the word impossible, I th or about, you know, miracles, the thing doing the impossible. I think like you, I think of the famous impossible, if you say to this mountain, and that it be removed, that is not the Lord saying that we all get to have uh, mountain view homes by lakes. We can't move, you know, that's not what it's about. It's about issues that were mountains in our lives, but I'm not preaching on that, so I won't, I won't land there. I'll just say, we think, of thing, we think of impossible, we think about medical things sometimes, people in our lives who, and people we love who go through medical issues, and the doctor says, gives bad news, and we say, nope, we're believing for the possibility of healing, and those things are great, we need those, and I have people in my family and, uh, who I'm pr we're praying for miracles with, and we just believe in God for, the uh, doctors say it's not possible, we say it is possible, amen? Because we believe that we speak the word back. And we, we love Jesus no matter what. But we're still believing for what some people say that's impossible. And I've heard Christians say, oh, that's impossible. And I, whenever they say that. I, now, some things aren't possible because it's not God's will. I mean, you know, so that. But I'm talking about, we're talking about things coming into our lives. Setbacks, hurts, heartaches, uh, relationship problems. I'm, I'm people say, oh, that, there's no way that marriage is going to last. It's impossible. There's no way they're going to. No, that's not true. It's possible. So, but, so I really want to talk about that. I want to talk about. Really focusing in on what, the, what it means to love people that hate you. Love people that hate you. So I'm, cause I, I got this message before I left because uh, someone said, well, it's just not possible for me to love that person. They mistreat me. They hate me so much. And, and when, I, when I got done listening to their story, and they're not here, so don't try to figure out who it is. But um, I thought, yeah, that's going to be hard. And the Lord said, yeah, but it's not impossible. It's brilliant. I said, you know, you're right. It is not impossible. Because, you know, when we think about miracles, we think, when I think about miracles, first of all, I think about physical miracles. They jump into my mind. I love people get miraculously healed. But what about the miracle? Let me just bring you back to the, your, your, your new birth in 1 Corinthians. What about the miracle of your salvation? I mean, you, you, you wretched scoundrels. I better, I better quit. <laughs> I mean, and you're, now you're, you're washed in the blood and you belong to the Lord and you're heaven bound. I mean, that's a miracle. Well, I don't deserve that. You've, you've heard my testimony, not all of it, nor will you, but um, uh, about selfishness and things and being self-centered and uh, walking out of God's will for my life. But God took me back when I wanted to come back and washed me clean and forgave me and gave me a whole new start. My whole destiny was changed. And along the way, I've been forgiven of selfish acts and selfish thinking. And so, so... You know, but the miracle of new birth, I mean, that's a pretty big deal. All things become new. Hallelujah. Come on, let's, let's never lose that. So somehow, because of the way we're treated, we think, you know, well, I can't, I can't forgive that person. And, and, and one day, if the Lord allows me, I'll tell you that I will tell you uh, that the only reason I got the joy and privilege of leading, praying with both my parents to the Lord was because... I had shown them that I had forgiven them of, the, of some horrible things that they had done to our family and to each other. And if I had not given off that set, that beat of that I love them and forgave them, they would have never called me. No way. Because you don't do that with people that are holding a grudge against you. And so, uh, you know, you have to, there's ways that that re, the response to that. And if the Lord frees me up, I'll, I'll share that testimony one day, the miracles that had to take place to get there. But my point is, this is a challenge. If you don't think, Luke, Luke listen to me, it says, Luke 6, 26 says, Woe to you when all men speak well of you. Be careful when all men speak well of you. When everybody likes you. Well, guess what? I'm not being woed. I'm not worried about that. <laughs> not everybody's speaking well of me. <laughs> so I don't, I don't have that problem. <laughs> I, mean, I have, some, I, have friend, I, I will tell you, I was, I was talking to my buddy Phil, and I was talking about going back to my fifth year through union, and I thought, man, I, my yearbook picture popped up, and they're going to use that as a badge. And I thought, oh, my goodness. The years have not been kind. And then I got to the reunion, and by the time I left, I thought, not so bad. <laughs> not so bad. Some people put on over 100 pounds. And, you know, you can, you have to just, uh, did that sound more braggadocious than I meant it to? I, well, I said I was worried about going there, but let me just tell you why. It's not because, I'm no Brad Pitt, I get that, but I'll tell you this, smoking and drinking ages you. So there's a lot of reasons not to do those two things, but I mean, so you know, I'm, I, I'm smoke free and drink free, so you know, I've I had a little bounce to my step, you know, I gotta tell you. And I haven't gained 100 pounds. Not 100 pounds. So you know, uh, I recognize that you, you go back and you, you know, you meet friends in, from school and guys you liked, and, and then everybody seemed to love everybody, but you know, not everybody agrees with me, and I'm from Connecticut. 
which is second only to Massachusetts politically. So you might know there's some friends I had in high school that don't agree with me and everything I post on Facebook. Could that be possible? And uh, so they had some comments. And when you have one or two friends that stick up for you, even though they don't agree, that means a lot to you, you know. So, but uh, for the most part, Jesus is warning you that sometimes people are thinking good of you because you haven't taken, taken a stand for anything, you know. So everybody speaks good. Now, that doesn't mean we go through life trying to make the people resent us. We still have to remember that we're supposed to have that uh, spirit of love, right? But he's just warning you, just be careful um, when all people think good of you. Maybe you're not giving out the right, you know, maybe you're being a little too political. You know, I, I, I uh, challenge people, you know, I, I'm, all, I'm for equality. I believe in it. I believe everybody ha ought to have an equal chance. But until you, equity is, is defined by a word, fairness. And, you know, I can show you in Scripture where everybody doesn't get the same ending. And that's just the way it is. And God, God you know, God is... God is not fair based on our definition because there's people who have been in the ministry sh uh, shorter than me and don't preach the tr truth and they have bigger congregation. I mean, it's not fair. It's not equal for everybody. I mean, that's just not the way it is. But when it comes to our socials, we want everybody to have an equal shot. And so um, uh, you, ha you have to say that as you present your life, you want to be careful. Remember what I said before we went on about being careful what you post, being careful how you react. And yet we're warned here to be, to be, to be woe means you know, it's kind of like, um, it's a word like, be aware or be concerned when everybody thinks, speaks well of you. Well, in the flesh, why would that be a problem? I, I, like a little, I like to have a little taste of that, you know. But that means that you may not be giving off the, what you think you should be giving off. And you may be compromising in some areas. Because compromise, that's why when a politician says, you know, they're for everybody getting the same thing and being equitable. It's a, it's a, it's a false promise because it sounds good, but it's not going to happen. We're not all going to get the same thing. And so, uh, but I, th I would love to have everybody get the same opportunity. How about you? That would be nice. That would be a good start. But, you know, if somebody gets the same opportunity and somebody works really hard and somebody doesn't work hard at all, well, they say it's not fair, but what's not fair is why should they get the same thing? And that's as much as I'm going to say about that because it's not a, this is not me. I'm just warning you. That, that when you hear the word equity, it's not the same thing as equality. And so in order to make everybody like me, there's some pulpits that people just have this general appeal to how to act. And yet the Bible is clear. And here's where it says, it says, stop hating people that hate you. That's it. Stop it. Stop it. Well, we know hate is an emotion of the heart. So what he's saying is stop treating people the way they treat you. And by the way, he's speaking to the disciples. If you look at the beginning of this chapter, he's not, if you're not all in, you're not going to like this message. You're going to unplug. But if you want to be all in and you want to be a disciple, that's our theme for this year, then you have to say, God, I want to be more like you when I leave here. Jesus is saying, because it says in the beginning of Luke 6, he, lo he looked up and began to teach his disciples, not the big crowds. This is not for everybody. This is for people who want to be more like Jesus. If you want to be more like Jesus... Love your enemies. Well, is that possible? Can we really love our enemies? Would Jesus ask us to do something that was impossible? Of course not. This is the miracle of possibility right here. Can't do it in my flesh. I try to live my life. I have some enemies, but I don't want to be anybody's enemy. How about you? That's a child. I mean, I have some enemies. It's hard to imagine, Gabe's not everybody that loves Pastor Steve. Shocky? Are you shocked? That's a shocked face right there. But I am going to be clear that I am not going to be anybody's enemy. I refuse to do it with God's help. I'm not going to act in a way that an enemy acts. I'm not going to say the way the enemy says. Because my Lord and Savior says, if you want to be like me, you've got to love your enemies. And, and how do we know what we love? Well, he then breaks it out. And I'm not going to go through it all. We'll, we'll teach on the attitudes coming up. You talk about getting more like Jesus when you get into that sermon. I mean, that's a... That's a shot, just bang, bang. But I just want to, I want to park here today, and here's how you do it. Here's, how, do you, how do you know you're loving your enemies? Coach, how do you know? I'll tell you how. I can say, Coach, I get both of them over there. That's good. Do good to those who hate you. That's it. So people are going to hate you. Uh-oh, I don't like to be hated. Well, if you're not being hated, woe to you or not being hated by anybody. Now, when you're hated, what do you do? When somebody's rude to you, how do you react? When somebody's mean to you, what do you do? When somebody says bad things about you, what do you say? Here's our challenge, all inners, disciples, do good. That's an action. That's not a feeling. So when, somebody, when somebody's being mean to you, which would mean they were doing things, I, I got asked one time, 
And I know I'm repeating myself, but that's what you get. You know, after 32 years, you're going to get some repeats. But someone asked me years ago, they said, would you rather have everybody, everybody, uh, you know, would you rather have some people not like you but never say that and you never know about it? Or you never, and, and, and act like they did or have people that, that loved you but oftentimes mistreated you because they're human. And I said, well, did I ever know about the people who didn't like me? And they said, no. I said, I'll take that. <laughs> if I never find out, you know. Our actions are the response to what's going on inside us. So we have an opportunity. I mean, do good to those who love you. Get in line. What does Paul say? Even the heathen do that. It's very easy for me to love people who love me. How about you? I mean, people do good things to me. I want to respond. But the test comes. The test for the impossible. To do the impossible is when somebody hates me in a way that I know about it, and then I respond in love. And by the way, there's no guarantee they're going to change their opinion about me. That's for the Hollywood movies, you know, that's in real life. No. And that's what I was trying to say when I spoke about that other thing earlier. Sinners are going to sin. That's what they do. They're going to sin. They're not going to respond. The angels, there's not going to be harp music. The angels are not going to sing. You know, sometimes they just, you get it just the door slammed in your face. Now what do you do? Well, I tried once. That's it. No. You still can't pick up the sword and cut off the ear. You still can't become Peter's and, and turn him in. Because Jesus says he showed them. I wish it would have caused them, the soldiers, to let him go. I mean, that would, but he, he showed them that's not our way. Our way of people who are all in, our disciples, our way is to love people. And how about you? Okay, I'm just going to ask you. How many of you want to be a disciple of Jesus? Not just a follower, but a disciple being disciplined by the God's word. Put your hand up and hold it up there. Okay. See, well, that means that we've got, we've got to challenge you. We've got to do the impossible, the impossible in the flesh, and love people. That, and by the way, I'm not talking about, when I, when, I, when I mentioned to somebody, they said, what does it mean, love Hitler? And they started naming a bunch of people, like infamous people who did horrif horrific acts. And, you know, I'm thinking, hey, how about worrying about your cousin? Hitler, don't worry about Hitler. Worry about, worry about, your, worry about your next door neighbor or that person you just don't want to see at the, uh, at the family reunion or that coworker who's constantly stealing your lunch, you know? Don't worry about Hitler. Don't worry about some politician that you don't like that you're never going to meet. This is for people that are in our lives. You know, and if you say, if I were to ask you to list an enemy, maybe you're just such a sweet bundle of love that you can't name one. And when, when we think of enemies, we're not talking about somebody's going to invade your home and, and murder you. We're not talking about that. Just enemies, people who, who are against you, who reject you, who dismiss you, the, you know, who are, are acting the opposite of doing good. <laughs> to the, they're not doing good. That's how we know they hate us. If, if loving people is doing good, then... People, how do you know if somebody doesn't love you or hates you? They're not doing good. Anybody got anybody in their life that's not doing good to you? Let me see your hand. Okay. So there's your, there's your target. There's your target. Doesn't matter if you, if you turn them or not, by the way. It doesn't matter if you flip them or not, by the way. In many cases, you will not flip them. You will make an impact because unchurched people, when they act in such a way, they're ready for a response likewise. So when you respond differently... It can, everybody say can, I didn't say will, open the door for some verbal activity about why you did that. Some of you need to write some letters, make some phone calls. Some of you, some of you, need, you know, in other words, it's time, and, 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 and the closer you do that to when they don't do good, that's when you may get the, the puzzled look, because non-believers, they expect you to act, well, they expect you to act like them until they find out you're a believer, if they know anything about it, Jesus expects you to act not like them. That's the difference. The difference is how we react. So I, just because I don't, because other people say, hey, how come you don't po post as much like you used to? And I know what they're talking about. I said, I don't want to. I don't want to. I post what I want to post. But I run it through the Holy Spirit. Because I don't want to post something that the people can misunderstand. In fact, I posted something about Pharisees. And, and that, that didn't even, I mean, even when, you, even when you mean well, people can misunderstand, amen? But we, we run these things through our heart. And it's not just social media, although that's it. It's also how we interact verbally within our families, around the dinner table, 
in the car driving somewhere of great length. I'll just open the altar right now, and you can all run up here and kneel, because you know you need to. So life is full of choices. Today I want to just talk to you for a few minutes about the choices. So here they are. Here's a choice. Because we have a choice to make. And we have a choice to let the Holy Spirit work through us and do the impossible. Or we can just continue on. Because we, it's easy to resent people we don't like or people that don't like us. And you could probably make a case. And by the way, I love you. So you could sit down with me over a cup of coffee and say, Pastor, here's why I don't love them. And at the end of the day, if I love you, I'll be like, man, yeah. That's right. How could they? Uh-oh. That doesn't change how we're supposed to respond. I may agree with you that you've been mistreated. And, and please look at me. I know some of you have had some deep hurts. I better get over here by the spiritual desk to say this. Some deep hurts. And I don't mean to, to uh, lessen them in any way. The hurts are real. Some of you have been abused emotionally, physically, even sexually. I get in and betrayed. Oh, look, I've often said the cut of betrayal is the deepest cut. Because amount, the amount of you think a person loves you, that's how they can betray you. So I get it. I'm not, I'm not lessening that. I'm not saying it's no big deal. Please don't misunderstand me. I, I'll weep with you. I get it. It's, the hurt is real. And we, we get hurts, and it's legit. And we're going to be offended, and we're going to be hurt, and, and, we can't, and it's how other people act. And, but just, I just want you to understand. So I get that the resentment is there, and, and we're not supposed to you know, want to be a hurt. And, you know, but, but here's the miracle. Here's the impo- it is possible to love people who don't love us, but it's a choice. Because it's an action of doing good to them who hurt us. And you know what? Here's what I'm going to It's not natural. It's supernatural. It's a miracle. Remember what I said? It's a miracle. We don't think of it that way. It's a miracle to love somebody who hates you. It's a choice to receive the miracle of being led by the Holy Spirit and walking on our faith. My Lord would not give me an assignment that he would not enable me to make. He's a good, loving, loving God. So if he says to do something... I can do it, but I'm going to need his help. How about you? A friend of mine who used to be on uh, years ago, and some of you will remember this name, but um, he responded, I want to just pull this up. Someone said, it's impossible. He was talk- we were talking along that, that post that I said about loving people, and he had mentioned, his name's Jeff T. Roller. Anybody remember Jeff? He was here, he got on the board, he's uh, doing really well. We've stayed connected, not as much as, much as I wish, but he, someone had responded, and he said, um, they're saying that, you know, and they had listed all these famous evil people. Am I supposed to love them? You know, and, 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 and he says, Laura, uh, I shouldn't say her name. He says, it's personally I find impossible in capital letters to love an enemy. I naturally want to hate them. He listed some zingers. She had listed some of these infamous. That's the trap. Bind us up and keep us out of God's will. Jesus can and has challenged, changed my heart toward my enemies. It took a lot, capital letters of prayer. There, that's, that's a key. We're going to talk about that in a minute. A prayer and repentance on my part. Now I can hang out with them, wish them well, bless them, serve them, and it does not phase me. Loving our enemies is not a request. It's a requirement that can only happen if the Holy Spirit changes my heart. If the Holy Spirit changes my heart. Did you get that? It took a, uh, um, now I can hang out with, uh, it does not, um, loving someone doesn't mean we love or agree with what they did. Oh, that's good, Jeff. Thank you for preaching my message on Facebook. Um, but it gives us the freedom to do so. Now, why did I read you? From, Jeff's not a pastor. This isn't just a pastor thing. And by the way, pastors need to work on it. We take a lot of shots. So, you know, we have a lot of people. But this is a lay, a lay person. So did you see what he said? I, I had to decide I wanted to do it, and then I had to pray a lot, and I had to decide that it was important to me. And it's not a, it's not a one-time. Pr- when, when somebody hurts us, if they hurt us in a grave way, we choose to forgive them. And then there may be memories of that weekly, a month later. So every time our memory comes up, we have to choose again to forgive them. That's the beginning. In order for me to do good to somebody who hates me, and I find out, how do we find out people hate us? Well, I already told you. By the way they treat us. They've done something to us. I mean, I know every one of you love me passionately. I mean, appropriately, but passionately. That was weird. Passionately sounded weird when I said it. <laughs> My wife's out there. She loves me passionately and appropriately. And so... I don't know where to go now, Amy. Where should I go? I don't know where to go. <laughs> but, but you can be passionate and appropriate in your love for somebody, right? Right? So, so how do I know that? The way people treat me. Well, how do I know some, the, way, the way people treat me? So it's no big mystery. I know it's a feeling at first, but we know love is an action word. We all agree with that. We've taught on that, right? Well, hate's an action word, too. 
I mean, if somebody hates me, never, I never know. And like I said, oh, it's too bad for them. But once they start to show me they hate me, so we have to decide. We have to choose. And Jeff laid out some key things. He's just a, he's a I don't think he's on a board this year. He's just a, a lay person wanting to live for Jesus, made a decision. I'm going to treat my enemies in a way that they know I love them and don't hate them. Now, that doesn't mean we've got to hang out with them. It doesn't mean we have to, you know, go to dinner with them and, and you know, uh, if you... It's not wrong to ask one out. Don't all come up running up to me and ask me to dinner today. I'll get a complex, all right? I mean, but maybe it sometimes means a cup of coffee. But it definitely means a contact sometimes. But it starts with prayer. We're going to need the help. In order to do the impossible miracle, we need Jesus. Amen? Amen. Healing miracle. Well, in order to do an impossible miracle of loving those who hate us, we need Jesus. Right. We're trying to do this in the flesh. It's not going to work. No matter how determined we get. You know, we, we just can't, we can't say, oh, I'm going to do this. and just, oh, I'm gonna. I don't know why I do the arm thing. Lord, forgive me. I'm going to do this. I really want to do it. No, no, no. Instead of doing that, get to an altar. Get to the end of your bed. Open your Bible and just pray. God, I need your help. And let the Holy Spirit fill you. Now you've got to start. But without that base, forget about it. Because in the flesh, we can't do this. That's why I call it a miracle. That's why it says it's, it, is doing, it is possible to love people that hate us. And we're going to have an opportunity to do that, especially between, in this season that we're in. Because if you make a stand for Jesus at all. Now, if you don't make a stand... Everybody's going to like you. Woe to you. But if you make a stand at all, prepare, don't be prepared if you're going to, to get that, feel that love back. And even if we forgive people, we can often have a residue of resentment. We have to be careful of that. We can say, I forgive you, but if that residue of resentment is there, they'll sense that. And how do we get rid of that? By doing things, good things. I'm not talking about writing a check. I'm talking, just doing, doing good, letting them know in a, in a real tangible way. One true test of being a disciple of Christ or Christian maturity is loving people that we don't like. We don't, we don't, like, every, you don't like everybody. I mean, some people are hard to like. They're, they're, the way they act, the way they, they respond, the things they say and do. But we can, with God's help, do the impossible and love them. Because it's not impossible. To, but it is impossible for Steve Miller in my flesh, and not with the Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians uh, it says uh, 6, verse 10, it says, to speak the same thing, that be, you'd be of the same mind, the same judgment. Now, he was speaking to the church. And how many times has a church lost their witness by having what we call, it's not even, I don't even like to use it anymore, a church split. Church is split because we're telling the world that we love them and they're wicked and evil, but we can't even love each other. And we wonder why the lighthouse doesn't shine as bright as it should in a community. We wonder why. And, and you, we forced, I've had, I bet I've had 10 phone calls over the years. Now, we haven't had a split. We've had some splinters, people leave it. But it's very, it's, it, God's been good to us that way. But we haven't had a split. And, and people will call me, uh, either part of the split, or and say, start to tell me, and I, this is what I do, and I suggest, I submit it to you, whether it's a church split or a family problem, immediately challenge them to go to prayer. Now, it's not my notes, but I just want to tell you. In other words, this is how you find out if they're just gossiping or they really care, you know. They want to, I said, oh, well, you know what, I don't know the details. And it could, it could be, it's people in, you know, our community. It's not that large, so you may be aware of something. I say, let me pray with you. Well, what? no, 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 let me pray. If they don't want to pray on the phone, or if it, then, then it's, it's check out. Because, because if they really are calling for prayer, they're ready to pray. But if they just want to tell me what's going on, I don't want to know about it. I don't want to hear it. And so... You know, I'm ready. I want to get them to prayer. Prayer is the thing that's going to matter anyway, right? And, I, and I, I'm better off not knowing, you know. I got my own fish to fry around here, huh? Come on. We got our own problems to pray about, our own people to minister to. So uh, I just want to, so I get it. But Paul's challenging that church who had a lot of problems. Remember, had the guy sleeping with his stepmom. I mean, he had a lot of problems. But he starts off by saying, we want you to, you need to come together if we're going to get anything fixed and stay together. So he wants the same judgment. So what he's really saying is you can disagree. We're not trying to be um, clones, but you've got to do it without strife. Because when strife gets into a body of believers, you know what James says? There's every evil work. Everybody say every. every. That's a lot of evil work. And when there's strife in a marriage, all of a sudden all sorts of things can come up, right? All sort of, when there's strife in a friendship, when there's strife in a church. It opens the door to everything, because as long as there's strife, it means I think I'm right and you're wrong, and I can justify what I'm doing. You make, if you take a political leader and on either side and turn him into the devil, somebody out there is going to think, or into Hitler, or some, they're going to think it's okay for me to do something evil to them because they're, they're evil people. 
So if you, if, you, if you get on the idea that we're right and they're wrong, or worse than that, we're good and they're bad, all of a sudden, things that we should never be involved in, we get involved in the idea that we're, no, friends, that's not who we are. That's not who we are. And young, young uh, teenagers, I want you to hear me. It, you know, as adults, we want to do a good job showing you how we respond to people who don't agree with us. How we respond to people who think differently than us. And, and, and who even think against the Bible. Jesus said, be careful when everybody loves you. So God challenges us to love. You know, there's, there's a physical love and there's agape love. You know, there's, you know, there's different ways that we love, obviously. Romantic love. Um, but agape is always used whenever we are commanded to love our enemies. It's an agape love. That means it comes through, through Christ. It's a, it's a love that's a spiritual love that I can't manufacture in myself. And even, listen to me, if, if you just hear this teaching and you don't ask Jesus to change your life and heart, this is just going to flutter away because you can't do it by yourself. We need a supernatural change. And I want to, send, I want to leave this place, if I'm going to leave this place more like Jesus, then I've got to follow his teaching when it comes to people. And you may, you may, you may some of you have gone through divorces, some of you have gone through um, horrific uh, parent, parenting situations. I mean, as I mentioned earlier, I mean, they are legit. And, you, man, you're going to need, you're going to need a miracle. I'll tell you right now, you're going to need a miracle. Some way, some of you have been mistreated, as I know your stories. You, you know. But we all have people in our life that, we, that are hard to love. <sighs> so do we just uh, chalk it up for, well, I'm doing my best, or do we really believe God for a miracle? Sometimes, I think it's sometimes a bigger miracle than to have uh, a broken arm healed and have somebody, a broken relationship healed. I think it's a big, bigger miracle. We all believe God for a broken arm being healed, supernatural. I mean, I know there's a, there's a, na a supernatural healing when God created us, how a bone heals, and I think I'm not a doctor, but the, certain cells rush to the, to the hurt, and, and uh, you've heard me teach on healing, and, and uh, the deepest part of the cut and heals from the inside out, cuts heal from the inside out. But maybe, maybe uh, emotional hurts, we need to see those as miracles too because it takes a lot to heal from the inside out, doesn't it? When somebody said trash about you, made fun of you for your faith, oh, there's one. We think that if we uh, hate people because they made fun of our Jesus, that it's okay. We could justify that. They're mocking. No, no. That, that, see, that's backward thinking. Now we have an opportunity. I said earlier, if they'd have done what they did, mocked uh, Muhammad the way they did, uh, that, that things would happen. Yeah, that's how they act. That's not how we act when our Lord's mocked, when our religion's uh, made fun of. We can have a challenge to show that we can do it. We can do it. Nothing's impossible. We aren't commanded to like our enemies, but to desire their welfare and best interests. That's not easy. I need Jesus. How about you? I need the Holy Spirit to fill me. If I'm going to want the best interests of people who don't care for my best interests, I need the Lord's help. Do you need the Lord's help? Do you need to get up maybe five minutes, ten minutes earlier and get in your Bible to help you? That boss that just snaps at you and mistreats you. And Do you need that? I need How about you? I mean, if your boss is, is, is being mean to you, you know, or your supervisor, you, you may have to get up earlier to handle it. You may just have to get up earlier to handle it. I mean, there's some pastors here that don't have to get up earlier to handle it. But, you know, you could, once in a while, that kid could say an amen back there for job security, couldn't he? Don't. Don't do it. No. I mean, but if you, some of you are planted in very rough places with, with, and, and the irritation is ongoing and the mistreatment is you can't get away from it. And so now's the time to do good to those who hate you. We're, we're, we're commanded in God's word to return good for evil because that's what God modeled for us, didn't he? I was a wicked, evil person. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for me. How about you? While I was yet a sinner, he died for me. Talk about doing good to somebody. Wow, didn't deserve it. Don't wait for that person to deserve it. They're not going to deserve it. On the contrary, Romans 12. If your enemy is hungry, see, here's, here's those action words. Here we go. Feed them. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you'll heap burning coals on his head. Someone said, wow, we're getting them back. 
Burning coal, you, in, in the days of, when this was written, there was a, a community fire. And in the morning, the women would come with a basket uh, that could handle it. And they would receive the coals early on while the man was sleeping. And they would receive the coals and uh, put into that basket. They could go and the fire in their ovens. It was a big deal to, to cook back then, to get a meal started. And they put that basket on their head, and they'd go back to their houses and begin to bless their house with the morning meal. So you thought it meant put some hot coals on the head of those people. Does that sound like Jesus to you? So what are we supposed to do? Well, we're challenged to pray for those, number four, who mistreat me, who treat me spitefully. See, prayer and hate doesn't mix. It does not mix. You cannot hate someone that you're praying for. You cannot, um, it, you just can't do it. If you're sincerely praying, you can't pray about them. I used to do that for our presidents that I didn't like. Pray about them. Lord, I, no, you got to pray for them. You got to ask God to bless them. Send people in their lives that can, can lead and guide them, help them make good decisions. Because prayer changes the, the, the participant long, often way before it changes the person you're praying about. Can I say that again? Some of you are wondering, aren't you? After that much. Prayer changes the person who's praise often more than the person you're praying about, and certainly quicker. The day I decide to pray a blessing upon someone who's mistreating me, I'm already starting to change in my heart because I'm not wanting to be mean and nasty to them. I'm wanting to pray for them. Already something's happening in my heart. It's a challenge. But remember, Jesus isn't preaching this to the masses. He's saying, you 12, come here. You want to follow me? Yes. You want to be all in? Yes. Now we know that there's still work to be done, and we know we have a betrayer in the crowd, future betrayer. And he's saying, here's what it is. Here's where we decide. We're going to make, if we're going to make it through this oncoming political season, and some people believe it's the last days, we got to be all in. Half and half is not going to get you there. Fence post sitting is not, you're not going to make it. It's going to be too easy and too, to justify the other way. Prayer, then, is a practical, powerful way to get rid of the resentment of residue. The resentment of residue that comes in. I'm, listen, I'm not saying, please, if, if I've given off any thoughts in you that I, the that I, pastor doesn't understand what I've been through, I may not understand completely. I get it. The hurt is legit. The abuse is legit. The heartache is real. The sin was grievous. It's real. It's horrific in some cases. Now, what are we going to do about it? Where do we go from here? What happens now? Do we just become like the world and just get bitter and resentful and, and cut people out of our lives? Or do we, at the very least, pray for them and let that pray? And then, if the Lord would have left it there, but then he says, do good. I don't know what that means. It could be a letter telling someone you care about them or, or a note card. It could be stopping over. I, you know, it's going to be, you're going to have to figure that out. There's not a one-size-fits-all in this. If you need help and feathering out, there's people in our church, and I'd be happy to sit down and say, here's, what I, here's the way I think. But, but, but that's doing it's not feeling. And if you're going to wait to the angels sing, you're never going to do it. You have to decide there's value in this and begin to pray. Prayer is the thing that prepares us to do those good things, which is to bless. A biblical word for doing good is to bless them. And we say, let me bless you by taking it. Let me bless you by buying a cup of coffee. Let, let Mitch bless me by getting me a 2% car loan. You know, let those things happen, you know. I said a miracle. We're talking miracles here. That would be a miracle, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, I'm looking for miracles. <laughs> In other words, you do something. You start off by praying to prepare your heart to do something. Well, I'm waiting for them. Well, they're, if they're not believers, don't wait for them. Although sometimes non-believers do a better job at this than we do because that's all they got. So they do a big, a big show. Can't just be a show. It's got to be a heart issue. I've had people, I, and I mean, I'm, I'm not saying I'm where I, I'm, I'm not, I got the right direction, but I'm not a perfection. But I've had people say to me, I, I've been betrayed, deeply betrayed by people who were supposed to be on my team, be on my side. And when I, when I continued on, and they said, people who love me too and love the Lord said, how can you do, why are you doing that? Why aren't you, I, 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 you don't get the grace until you need it. Let me say this. So if you, if, 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 if I, did I, who did I say I was going to, did Phil, did I say I was going to use you in the message today? And yet, here we are. <laughs> so
So, so Phil comes to me and tells me about this person, you know. And I said, Phil, that ain't right, man. And, and he walks away feeling more resentment than less. I haven't done my job as a, as a fellow Christian. My job's not to make, not make him feel good, good about feeling bad. That's not what we're supposed to do. Not help you justify that hate or that resentment. No. So I had people, men of God, saying, How do you, you ought to let him have it or you need to do this. One even said you need to get a lawyer. And so, I mean, and then, and then finally... I, I started, and, and they're good people. They love me, so when they saw me being mistreated, they responded. And that can happen, especially with a spouse. You know, you, Men, check yourself. Someone can, can hurt you, and you can react. But if someone hurts your wife, well, that's my wife. Well, that, who changed the rules? I get it that, the, that you're offended and hurt. What are we going to do about it? And so it doesn't happen all the time, but later on I had people say, man, I can't believe that you continue to treat that person the way you did. And, that for, and it hit me. That was the Lord helping me, because in my flesh, I didn't want to because they betrayed me and mistreated me. I didn't like it. We're not talking about liking it. We're talking about using it. And now those people are saying things about me, good things, saying, Pastor Steve, I can, you handle that. <laughs> it's, it's not often. I wish it was more. Not that I was betrayed more, but I wish I took, let's take every opportunity of hurt and mistreatment and, and abuse and spitefully being used, and let's use that as a way, with God's help. Some of you are sitting and saying it's not possible. It is possible. It is possible. It's not natural to want to bless people who are intentionally hurting us or those we love, but it is possible because forgiveness is a choice. And I would say to you is to keep praying and keep forgiving. It's not a one-time prayer. It can, can be a, you can have a revelation through a prayer where you say, and when God speaks to you and says, hey, here's what the Holy Spirit says to me. Are you ready? Knock it off. Well, that doesn't sound very Holy Spirit-ish. But he will say, knock it off. I mean, first he tries to prod me, but after a while he said, who do you think you are? And what he'll do is he will drag you back to the cross if you'll let him, which is where we need to be anyway. And he will show you all the grievous, horrible sins you've done that he so graciously and lovingly forgave you of. So in order for me to do good, I've got to get good, or I won't do good. If my heart's still loaded with resentment, the residue of resentment, I will never get to the place where I'm supposed to be. None of us will. But I'm here to encourage you today, I promise, I, you can do it. You can do it with God's help if you'll ask the Lord. I, I don't know all your stories. I, I, know you've, you, I do know there's a lot of hurt out there. We don't, and it needs to be, it can't, it won't. I'm, I'm saying to you, let's all be the 12 disciples today. Let's all lean into this and say, change me, Lord. And, and see that, that hurt as an opportunity to react in a way which pleases Jesus and helps us to stand up. Not for our own glory. Not for our own glory. And so what do we want to take today? Where are we going? What do we want to take? Well, I hope I've given you a lot to chew on here. This is a challenging message, I know. And, and, uh, but yet I hope that there's been, I hope you get my heart in that. We're all in this together. I pray for me, I'll pray for you, but let's do it together. Let's not lower our standards, be like the world. No, 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 no. Let's be like who we are in Christ. Amen? Amen. I want to declare today that nothing is impossible with God's help. I'm going to say, nothing is impossible with God. Pastor Steve, you don't, you're right, I don't know, but God knows. With men, this is impossible. With God, all things are possible. Everybody say all. Maybe next, I was going to, I've already got the theme for next year. It was, this year was all in, and next year it's, as I told you, but maybe it should be all things. All in, all things. All things. You, you say, so what, I mean, what does it mean? It means your case is no different. If you want God in it, he, open your heart, he will get in there, and he can do it. And then we, you say, well, I, 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 I'm not strong enough. Well, then get some strength from prayer and godly counsel, because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That means reading his word. Get that, get that uh, hillbilly music off your radio and get some Jesus music on there. Amen. Huh? Come on now. Get rid of that hip-hop and hip-slop music off there and get some Jesus music on there. You've got to be going to need some help to forgive that. To, otherwise, here comes resentment. Did I leave any music genre out that I need to pop? Maybe, I don't know. It's amazing the kind of just 
what you read and who you listen to and what music is, how it changes our hearts, isn't it? It's just the atmosphere. Number two, there's a residue that sticks to us when we choose resentment instead of releasing people from their offense. You think that we don't know it. You think your family doesn't know it, but there's a residue of resentment that sticks with us when we leave people unforgiven. And instead of shining brightly for Jesus, there's a shade that gets on us. Causes us to say things. We, and if it's to somebody that comes to us who's had a similar thing, man, we jump on that to justify our feelings. No, we want to, if we're going to shine brightly for Jesus, we've got to get that residue of resentment off. So who do you resent? Who needs to be forgiven? Sometimes it's a simple thing of praying a prayer in your seat or coming to this altar. Forgive them and now we've got to show them somehow. Maybe not some sweeping act, but we've got we to do good now. We've got to speak good. Can't, keep, can't tell everybody what they did 20 years ago or two, 20 days ago. We can't try, you know, no, 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 no. They're forgiven. You know, I'm forgiven by Jesus. I don't want him coming up telling you all, all the things I did that he's forgiven me of. Are you hearing the heart of God today? We're going to go forth this place. We're going to, be, we're going to release people. And we're going to do the impossible. We're going to love people who hate us. Because love is always the right choice. It's never the wrong choice. It's never just a feeling. It's a feeling, too, thank God. I love the feeling. But that feeling comes sometimes. That's the caboose. The train is the decision to do good. And the caboose is the after we do the good. Did you know that? Some of us are waiting. We're putting the... the, the <laughs> We're saying when we get the feeling, we'll do it. That's backwards. We do it, and oftentimes we feel better about that. And even if they kick us in the shin afterwards, we know we've done right. We go hopping away and thanking the Lord. Now, I don't want to bow your heads and close your eyes and listen to me now. Listen to me the best you've listened today. You're going to be t you're saying, hey, those are not, I can't do it, Pastor. Yes, you can. Listen to me. Yes, you can. But not by yourself. I can't do it. Do not. You're going you're gonna to think of a person or an incident, you're going to say, I can't do it. I'm saying, yes, you can. You, you need help? You need counsel? You need prayer? You can do it. Jesus will help you. Let's not, let's not live our lives with resentment in our heart, that residue that stifles us. Some people live with the residue of resentment, and they don't do ministry because they, they have that residue of resentment. They think they're not qualified. You know what? Get qualified. Forgive that person. Release that hurt. Come on, do it. Lord, I pray for us with our heads bowed and eyes closed. I'm not going to ask for a response. So personal time. But God, I pray as you bring people into our minds, Lord God. There's people in our, sometimes it's so easy. They just pop in. They're there. They're, we live with it. But other times, Lord, when we hear their name, there's an anger. There's a resentment. God, I pray, God, we release that right now, God. Would you help us to do that, Holy Spirit? Speak to us today. Don't let us leave this place, God with hate or resentment in our heart. That is not you. That's the evil one. The puppet master. And when we justify not blessing people because of what they say or do or post in, on Facebook, God, God forgive us. God, let us be people of the book, your word, people who love people no matter who they are. And we'll give you all the praise and glory. God, do the in, in our flesh and make it possible through your Holy Spirit. And we thank you for it now, in Jesus' name. All God's people say it. Would you stand with me with a smile on your face as we sing this closing song? I, I trust that this word that was preached today will stay alive in your heart. God, as if God goes with us and blesses us today. And would you come back in a loving way? I need you tonight at what time? What time am I supposed to come in? Uh, no, the leadership needs to get here before 6, though, right? 5.15, I expect to be back here ready to... Be used by God, and, and when that little kid comes up and kicks you in the shin, now you, don't have, you can't kick him back in the shin. Just rub your shin and smile, all right? Amen. God love you. Sing this song. It'll be our benediction. Praise God. I'm glad you're here. Be like.